Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to welcome my guests, Mickey and Lisa Barber, the Barber Twins, a.k.a. Yeah. Um, before we jump into your story too much, I also want to interview my co-host, uh, Ashley Kelly, representing the British Virgin Islands and Olympian and uh, also a 200-400 runner. Um, so joining me to, to help get this conversation going, I appreciate you, Ashley, for joining me. Uh, so Mickey and well. Lisa... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I talked too much. No, I was saying, I'm here to balance you out, keep you from being reckless, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm for talking too much. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so Mickey and Lisa, okay, you two are have been super well known in track and field for a while. Um, back in the Jersey days, you guys were all stars. I actually went to high school in Jersey. And so yeah. I used to see y'all. Yeah, I know. I wasn't good enough. So I wasn't in the good people's circles <laughs> at that know. point. But uh, I, I was aware of y'all. Probably slightly, I'm embarrassed myself, probably partially why I went to South Carolina as well. Not oh, just y'all. I'll give y'all like a five. The secrets are coming out. What's yeah. that? The secrets are all coming out. Oh, now. yeah. Oh, that's that's the whole point of this. The secrets gotta come out. So, you know, I, I know say, we're in that decision making process. I don't care if it's a drop list. So hey. The whole point is that you two were like superstars when I went to high school. Um, and you know. It's really cool to get to sit here and talk to you. I want to hear about your journey, how you got into track and field. You know, I, I just tons of articles in Montclair, but I want to hear from you, how you guys got going. I want to hear about, you know, going to South Carolina, everything. Tell me, you know, whatever you feel like chatting about. So, I mean, when did it get started? Why track? Okay, I'll go first. You go yes. first. Yes. Well, I'm Mickey Barber. Um, we both started running track our freshman year of high school. Our mother wanted, mother and father, they wanted us to join a club or a team or something just to have a, something to do after school or correct extracurricular activity. Mm. So we tried to join a bunch of clubs, the hiking club, the key club. Yeah. What is the key club? It's a club. I don't Inqui know. Inquiry minds would like to know what the key club is. We went the first day, but we didn't really go. So we mm. never found that out. <laughs> and then we uh, joined a track team. And the track team was cool. We had the best coaches in the world, the best teammates in the world. Mm -hmm. And it was just great camaraderie with the guys and the girls. And we're both competitors because we've always been athletic our whole life because mm -hmm. we grew up on the, the best street in the world, Madison Avenue, you know, with the best athletes in the world. So we were always playing and running, doing something. And when we joined track, it just fit. And actually, Aaliyah Williams, who went to Texas, is how we got into it, the Williams family. They live right across the street from us. So mm -hmm. we saw her in a magazine, and she was running for Colgate Games in um, middle school. I'm like, she's a superstar. You're really in a magazine. Mm -hmm. So then we joined a track team, and it was like, track is cool. And I started running the 400. I'd ran everything my freshman year sprints, and mm -hmm. I the 400 – I ran a relay my like the last track meet of the year. And they're like, wow, you split 60 point. I'm like, what's that mean? What's your PR? I'm like, I don't know. And I just stuck with the 400 from that day on. Mm -hmm. And then from my freshman year to my senior, I became national championship, national champion by my senior year. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, like, I just love track and field. And there's not from one day from that day till now where I didn't love it so it was just a blessing and then we went I went to South Carolina yes and um well she already pretty much gave the intro <laughs> and uh I started my name is Lisa and I started running the 100 and the 200 and same thing I didn't know anything about times and I didn't even know what a 200 was. Like, I didn't really know about track like that. I just knew about racing in the street and stuff like that. And um, I started sprinting. And by the time my senior year two, I became the high school national champion in the 100 and the 200. And then we went to South Carolina. Okay. So mm -hmm. was there any point that you guys decided, were going to decide to go to different colleges? No. Oh, no. See, ours college is just um, making plans. We didn't sign till super late, I think. And we went to- We signed in like May, June, like late senior year. Yeah. We went to um, Ohio State, Villanova, Chapel Hill. In South Carolina. We, South, went, on we went on four trips. We had uh, letters from every school in the country, both were the national champions. And mm -hmm. we went to those schools. We never came to the West Coast. But yeah, that might have been a different decision. We probably would have been out, out west if we would came, but we, would, we were like, nah, that's kind of far. We don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah. And so when we got to South Carolina, it was just like, 
it just felt yeah. like home and all the schools are great but when we got to our South Carolina we just loved it and we weren't oh that's we weren't going separate so I think the West Coast schools knew like now nah, and I remember Texas they had a lot of seniors already mm -hmm. and since we signed late like they only had like one scholarship left and we were like no yeah. we're not separating so like I was saying, I was I was in Jersey. Jersey track was crazy, and y'all were y'all were pretty, you know, y'all were dominating out there. And so for yeah. me, it's like it had to be more than just a hobby that you picked up, or was it? Was it just you know y'all took the track and and just were just that good, or was there something else that you know that made track the thing? Because you know, you two, it's so funny. Like I, in in high school in Jersey, I didn't really find at first track was a big thing. And then mm -hmm. it started like really popping off into, you know, in my mind, Jersey at the time was one of the most competitive track states. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. y'all winning stuff in Jersey, it's like on a national level, you're, you're really good. I, I ran on some four by four and we, mm -hmm. you know, high school time, we're running like three twenties and, and Camden's out here running like three Oh nine. I so, remember Camden. You know, mm -hmm. Jersey was the, the real deal. So, yeah. and, and so, and Jersey is tough too. So what is it that, you know, <laughs> I know there's not a whole lot of options for there were probably a lot a whole lot of options for different sports, but did you guys just take the track or or was there anything else about it? Yeah, there's a whole lot of options for sports mm -hmm. that I mean we played softball um yeah. in middle school. We were okay. undefeated, we were the Reds. So um <laughs> that was a team sport. Undefeated, so y'all were good anyway. Yeah, we we were good. You know I mean, I mean, we were all I just know we were athletic. I didn't think we were, but like our whole childhood was just outside playing. playing. Like, oh, yeah. it was and we didn't even know how good we were especially when we started running track because when we started running track everybody already ran track already so they knew they okay. knew what was going on and I'm like oh what's this what's the block start what's the block or but then once we started running it was like oh this is cool this is like, fun we love running and our teammates were cool our the men's and mrs race race Bobby and Doris Ellis rest in peace um miss Ellis uh, it was just we loved it. it I don't know. Matched. We just messed and we, we had fun. It wasn't like some of the workouts we had were hard. We look back like twenty two hundreds. Like I can't. Even. But we had fun in I the snow, shoveling out lane yeah, one. Yeah, the snow. Yeah, no, like, I don't even talk. But about we it. did it. I don't know. Like forty degrees. Like oh, it's warm. Like what? I live in LA now, so like forty. It's not degrees. seventy and sunny. It's like I'm not going outside. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. But. Mm -hmm. Um, growing up in Jersey, like track was big. It was big. We just didn't do it until high school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Colgate games. Colgate and games. Yeah. yeah. And Colgate was big. Mm, I've heard of it. But once we got that track bug, we just did it. And it didn't, it was a hobby. It wasn't even a hobby. Like, oh, we're, we're running track. We're going to run gonna track. We're going to run track. Oh, and we yeah. had to do it and keep doing it. Y'all went all in. So who was the, uh, everyone I talked to, there's somebody who kept them at practice, kept them on top of it. So who was that person for you to kept you guys at practice? Made sure you were there. You didn't give up. You didn't decide to go do something else. I mean, we didn't have to. It. We did it. It Mr. Spivey, race. our coach, but he didn't. He Nobody didn't had have to, push to like push it. So I was just motivated. This is uh, yeah. My parents yeah. thought we were lying at first. They, <laughs> oh, they didn't know you were going to track track practice. Not at first. They thought we were like. <laughs> So we would get home at like seven, you know, so they're like, are y'all really going to practice? But then they saw we started coming home sore and we could like barely walk. They were like, oh, they're serious. You know, like we thought we might've been hanging out ourselves, which was no. And uh, we just stuck with it. You know, we really did have fun. I think that's what kept us going is because it wasn't, um, it, was, it was competitive. It wasn't forced. We meshed with everybody. And then we were we were getting better at something, and mm -hmm. every weekend was like, oh, you PR. move up, a, a new PR, oh, county champion, this champion, that, and it's like, oh, I might be kind of good, like you know, it was like that. It's like scholarships, oh, okay, that's you what, know? yeah, and it just kept getting better. When did that scholarship stuff come into play? Like, when was it like, oh, wait, I can go to school with, with this? The end of sophomore, sophomore year. year. Mm -hmm. oh, that's early. I yeah, think like probably on you guys early. Yeah, it was. It was like Duke, Cornell, uh, <laughs> Chris, UVA, USC, Texas. And it was like, wow, you know, like so by our senior year, everybody was, wanted us. Yeah. And actually, so y'all were thinking like, okay, we good, good. Yeah. Like, this is real. 
Yeah. Mickey always knew she was really good. It just, it took me a little while to be like, oh, wait a minute. I might be able to do something too. And then like, it gave me more confidence in my, in, in track and my academics. And Mickey went straight for the quarter. So that's a big, big decision. I didn't know what I was doing. Like, what's a 400? I don't know. I really didn't know anything about it. So when I ran it, they told me how good I ran. And I'm like, okay. And then I just was like, oh, I can do this. Like, I love the 400 for some reason. Uh-uh. Um, but, I see the 400 as a love-hate relationship. But if you love it, great. I know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get that love back sometimes. But like, I don't know. I just stuck with it. And then, mm-hmm. I mean, once I got to college, I just remember the first week of practice. I just remember it was the last, the first week or something, and I, they were like, oh, Mickey's taking off too fast, or I did something extra. I was like, yeah, I am. And I just stuck with it from that. And me and my, my teammate, Demetria Washington, and I just, it was just us two, like, battling every, every Monday was like a track meet. Yeah, South Carolina. <laughs> All of us, so. Yeah, yeah it was. It was real. Yeah. yeah. How did that feel, going from, like, being the top every weekend, breaking records, to being in the college program and having people who are just as good as you competing against you each day? I mean, it was good. I, I knew that the competition was going to be tough mm-hmm. and that our teammates were good. That's why I went, because I was like, oh, she's going there? We had, like, the, the number two recruiting class of our year. I think we didn't have number one. I think, I think no, we had number one. Oh, maybe I think so. Um, the other SC the other, there. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> so the cap. Let's see that shall not be named. <laughs> um, I mean, I didn't think I, I expected that. Mm-hmm. So, like, oh, these are the top people. Oh, we're gonna be good. Like, me and Demetria, the Michelle and Makisha, I knew they were going. Shaw Foster. Foster, I was happy, like, yeah, we're gonna have a bomb team next year. And because we, I knew them from um from national championships that we used to go to mm-hmm. all through high school. So I was excited. And when yeah. we got there, we pushed each other. Yeah. To me, like, oh, let's, Tony let's get Williams it. Tony there, Williams. Alan Johnson, Melissa Morrison. A lot of track legends were there. Yeah. Like, and y'all, so y'all, your your recruiting class, was that the shift in South Carolina? That was the shift. Oh, that was the oh, yeah, yeah. So that you guys started that culture. You know, we I talked to Lashinda recently and she was like, man, every practice I'm having to go all in, you know, by oh, the time yeah. I got there. So you guys kind of got that started because it was like that when I got there too. Me yeah. and D, me and Demetria, I'm going to say we set that off. They did. For the oh, 400. <laughs> no, did. practice was yeah. real. I, I was Monique. And Monique. Tony ha- Monique Hennigan, Tony, Tony Williams, yes. Charmaine Howell, yeah. um, Dawn Ellerby, Burt, Soren, Brad. Brad uh, like, it was Michelle Fournier, Melissa, Miss Lisa, Mr. Pika. Like we had mm-hmm. real heavy hitters, whether it was the throws, the sprints, the, the jumps, distance, Rodina. The jumps, Rodina Bard, Chelsea. Well, Chelsea wasn't there yet, but like we had people that were already, when we were freshmen, we had so many mentors and motivators and we got there like we had nothing but the best to look at like yeah. oh and Let's then we're in the sec so yeah, we just had to, yeah. we just had to get on you and auburn and mm-hmm. like schools that you read about yeah, and, and i know wow. <laughs> Peter Gowdy. I'm like, let's go. Yeah. So it sounds yeah. like you guys were part of a culture change. Um, you know, that there were some pieces in it that were already there, some older, some mm-hmm. of the older classes were still there, but you guys coming in were like that catalyst to change the culture, become yeah. more competitive. And eventually, I mean, you guys won the school's first national championship, right? Yes. You know, that was you no, know, we, you know, so that was big. And so you guys were a part of a big culture change coming in there and making sure that when folks got to practice, they didn't mm-hmm. slack off and just like, oh, I'm on scholarship. So I'll just play around. No, it's like, if you step on the line today, it's we're trying to be the best. So you, guys, you know, some did slack off, but it was like getting where you fit in. Yeah. You got chewed up too. Category. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you know, I walked on to SC. Uh, you know, I was, like I said, a Jersey guy. And I looked mm-hmm. up to y'all. I looked up to Tawana too because she was in Jersey, just crushing yeah. it, being all the mm-hmm. guys. And yeah. so, you know, I had so I've seen SC for a long time, and I was like, I want to go down there. So I I had not run fast enough to actually get a scholarship. I ran like 48, and I had gotten close but got injured, and so I ended up mm-hmm. actually walking on to the team. And after my freshman year, I was put on full scholarship because I was, you know, I was let off the four by four that won nationals and all my times got like cut in half. And okay. I attribute that to me being a walk-on and me being hungry. But every day I practice when I had a choice, 
I could have trained with the guys who were on scholarship who were slacking, or I could have mm -hmm. gone over there with Otis and John and John. run those 300s. And so what I did was I ran 300s with Otis Harris, Jonathan Fortenberry, and after getting you know <laughs> demolished by them every day, eventually I got to the point yep. where I earned my full scholarship. So, so were Otis, you there that year? Batman was there too, and Kenny. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a, it okay. Was a, yeah, Otis mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was wild. It was a lot of yeah. Everyone was there. A lot of superstars. Okay. Yes. Yes. So tell me, I want to hear about the 2002 national championship and South Carolina's first championship, and you guys both played some instrumental roles in there. Um, let me hear about that because I know that had to be a, a exciting, you know, crazy day. Yeah. Well, for me, it was bittersweet because I was a captain at the time and uh, I was injured. So I was in the cast there. Oh. So I was just sitting on the sidelines watching and I made sure I flew myself in and I was there to, to watch them win. So I got there a day later or something, but I just wanted to be there. So I said, Coach Ron, I'm coming. He's like, for real? I said, I'm gonna make sure I'm coming. And I did. And so I just wanted to be there for the team to be a leader, to be a, to a friend, to be a teammate, to show everybody that I'm there for them. And I was the loudest one screaming in the crowd mm -hmm. in the stands. So I just was there for moral support for the team. So when they won, I mean, I felt like I won too. I just wanted to be that win? Come on. I mean, I wasn't on the track, so I can't even say I it. Know, but, it's it's you know. hard, but as a captain, you got to show your face and be there and show support. You're part of that win, too. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one thing you said that you wanted to be a leader. So what type of leadership qualities do you think you learned as being a captain and over the years in, high, in college? Uh, basically, just to um, lead with confidence, be a listener, be a, be a friend, be somebody that people can communicate with and, and talk to basically. I think I didn't have to make sure everybody did this. I just led by example. And I think that's what people saw. So if you um, do what you're supposed to do and do it with passion and people will see that. So mm -hmm. that's the main thing that I, I don't have to be like, oh, when are you gonna be here? When are you doing that? You know, I wasn't the, the type of person that's gonna be like telling people what to do. I just led by example and I showed them like, Every Wednesday, uh, we had to do a long run or something. Every morning, I would go on my runs. Mm -hmm. um, by junior and senior year, I was, I made a uh, dean's list. And, you know, sometimes I did mess up. I wasn't perfect. But, you know, I came back and bounced back. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Like, maybe you might have a bad semester, but you got to come back and, and make that better. So people saw once I did have a bad semester my freshman year, I did get hurt. I did, you know, but I did come back at the Dean's List. And I did come back a national champion. And that's what I showed them, like you can fall and come back. So being a leader is being able to take wins and losses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, well, said. well said. How about you, Lisa? Um, for me, the, the, two, the 2002 championship was like, I feel like it was my breakout moment because before then I was like always like Mickey shadow, not shadow, but like I didn't really step up. I can say that like, it was always like, oh, let's go, Mick. And I'm like, mm, maybe I can get fourth, third. Oh, I didn't really have that much confidence. And um, I'd always have confidence in the relay, though. I don't care if I'm in the four by one, four by two, four by four. I'm going to like do it for my team. But when it came to myself, I kind of was like, eh, like I was like a C performer, to be honest. Um, but then, you know, right like a week before nationals, whenever the deadline is, you have to declare events. I qualified in the 100, the 200, and the 400. And it was like, in the 100, I was like third, and the 200, I was fourth. So I'm like, okay, I'm ready now, senior. And then Coach Fry, I was like the last person making it in the 400. And Coach Fry puts me in the two and the four. I'm like, Coach Fry, like, I am not the 400. Like, it's my first time in the 100. Like, so he put me in the 400 and the 200. Um, and the four by one and the four by four. Oh, nope, didn't run the four by four. But uh, we'll talk about that. But uh, I ran the 400 and each round I PR'd. I ran 52.5, then 52.0. And then surprisingly, like I was, it was like, oh, just go get a point. And I was like, a point, man, wait a minute now. And, um, you know, Lashinda, me, Lashinda, Demetria, like we ran our hearts out and then, um, 
I PR'd him at 50.8. And it was like the easiest 400 I've ever ran. And I'm like, what? I, I, I'm running like, am I in, am I leading right now? And um, coming home, uh, I was, she was from Rice. Oh man, I forgot Beckford? her name. Allison Beckford. Allison Beckford won with like 50.82 and I ran 50.87. And that oh, was- That was close. Whoa. That one burns Whoa. your chest. I didn't even know. Like, I didn't even know I was even. Yeah, like, oh, I'm not a 400 runner. I just ran 50 point, whatever. Like, it really was that. But it happened like that. Seriously. Like, it was like, what? I was like, you're running the 400? You could do it. <laughs> but I remember before that, I really was like, you know what? I'm just going for it. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm just going to go. And I did it. And that gave me, like, uh, just confidence, even to show, like, even when you think you can't, if you just do it, you you might you might do it and then i became the ncaa runner-up in the 400 and i got fourth in the 200 the 200 was like 30 minutes after the 400 yeah, and yeah. i still ran pretty well um we won the four by one i didn't run the four by four but i know we, like that record will probably still be up there but um i'm sorry yeah <laughs> yeah i was actually that's the first time i was ever ready to be like okay i'm ready to run the four by four and i was like wait i'm not running like what and I just it was a shock but they still won and um they broke the record right? yeah they broke the record mm -hmm. and um congrats to Sita, Tiffany, Lashinda and Demetria um and it was it was a great experience and it and just, be the first ever national champion yeah yeah, yeah. that's big that's, I that's a lot trying to get us to build a float for y'all the guys we were like come on man wouldn't that have been dope if they would have built the float for us oh, they would have been no float got some special treatment I'm gonna just say well, we should get special Hello. treatment. We should have came back with shades on. <laughs> yes, we are the. Why would we not? If they were the yeah. football team, no, they no. would have tried the Jets. The listen, baseball listen. team. Oh yeah, the baseball team won too. I think it was after. No, oh, they yeah, they won the football for it. Yeah, but that's why it was crazy because I was on it the next year as a walk on. Mm -hmm. So it was like these guys are the national champions, and we were at SEC. And Franz looking around, like you're leading off, and I had this baggy bodysuit because I was a walk on. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it ran out of my body though. I definitely <laughs> out of my body that day. I was like, man, I'm terrified. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it was. It was so. So those experiences happen when you show up to the big meeting. You're like, look, I don't care what's happened to this point, but I'm coming out here to game today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, that's pretty. I have a funny story. One of you, I, I'm trying to, I feel like it was you, Mickey. Nothing. I, I Nothing. want to say it was, it was you. We were doing one lappers one day in the mm -hmm. bubble. And for you, all you listening at home, the bubble at the time was this little, you know, it was this rinky dink, a hundred. Square. And, yeah, it was like a square track. So really hard to get around. The workouts in there were really tough. And we used to do this thing called one lapper. We just run as hard as you could for one lap essentially, right? And mm -hmm. coach would give us like 90 seconds rest. So I don't know who it was. I think it was you. It was probably Mickey. Yeah, I think I it was. Like, what's going but on? It was 90 seconds rest. And one of you did like two of them and it took a break. Like, you know, went, did something. I don't know. Well, that was me. That was change, me. <laughs> change your spikes, go take a breather. Yeah. Yeah, I was good for and, that. And I, you know, I was doing my 90 seconds rest. So I get to like number five and here you come walking up, line up next to me. Oh, that was me then. That was you? Oh, oh if man. I took the break? Yeah, that and was me. Came back, but then line up next to me though on my last one. So How'd I, like, I do? I was like, come on, man. Well, how'd you do? So yeah. we got out and I was running as hard as I could. I got out as hard as I could with everything I had left. Cause I was like, yo, you are not, you are not about to embarrass me out here today. Okay, everyone was there doing one lap, everyone was looking. So I got out as hard as I could. And then somebody was like, ooh, ooh. Was <laughs> that like, was probably oh. me. You don't remember that? No, but I, when I'm she about said to break. walk down in this one lapper. So I treated, I was in game, but I treated like a trap me, man. I put my elbows up and I started moving <laughs> to the side. And you like ran off the track into a high jump mat. Oh, I feel like that, that was, was me. Yeah. Everybody, you know, some people were mad at me, but I was like, hey, look, you me out, Adrian. <laughs> wow, oh. Adrian. It was that serious? <laughs> Listen, was that serious? Man, they started, you put look. the national champ into a high jump bed. Look, look, Just saying. Don't embarrass me. This was practice. Practice was warm back in the day. Why? Mind you, Ashley, when you went around the curve, it's really like running a like a baseball. Like you yeah, have to set yourself terrible. up to go around the curve. Like it, 
it was a square. Yeah. So imagine, you know, someone's coming in and then you, you yeah. have to like run off or you'll wipe out. I like mean, literally square, wipe out. Just like every other guy that I was racing against at practice <laughs> trying to prove myself, man. You was trying to, they were making those noises. And the team we had then, you know, I went to a meet once and came back overseas. I went ran for the VI somewhere and I ran slowly. This was when I was still a freshman. And those guys made fun of me for like, you know, months. You know, you oh, were you're not, not living that down. 49. So I'm sorry. I was like, look, man, I'm a walk on. I'm trying to, you know, embarrass me out here. <laughs> yeah. I think what? I do remember Adrian. Yeah. That was. Was that you? I'm sorry. Typical. I pop, I pop, it's all right. Like, you know, you were fast. So, like, you were a little more rested. That wasn't fair. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Yeah, it took me out. But, you know, I didn't get hurt. It's cool. You had to. No, you didn't get walk. hurt. You just kind of, like, you know, into the mat. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Well, that's a definition of equality. I know. That's what been asking for. Exactly. But still, you did it. You did it. You did it a little dirty. A little dirty. A little dirty. They yeah. started making the noise that. Yeah. Like, oh, so that was hurting your pride. Uh -oh. oh no! And I was coming. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that. I assume everyone has heard. Yeah. That. Ooh, we don't know what that is. Definitely know the movie. I mean, heard it when it's happening to you, like the person's behind That's you. That's happened once in my life. Yeah, it happened. Yeah. Allison walked me down at Mount St. Relay on the front one. That's the only time I got walked down like that. Was that like the first time Allison yeah. here, walking you down? I'm like, dang, there's nothing you can do. I you know. know. I mean, it's Allison Felix. Some you people are just like, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm down. pretty sure you still went 50 point. No, no, this was a four by one. Oh, four by one. Mm. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Yeah, you know, a little dust in my mouth, little <laughs> little flakes. Yeah, but that's you it. know, and that's another thing about track that I try to show people because there's no quick victories. Like you know, they look at someone like Bolt, who you know, at his highest, just the best ever. I was like, yeah, a couple of years before that, he was kind of getting smoked. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's yeah, Tyson, you know, Gain, Xavier were giving it to him for that all day long. And so this game, you know, track and field, sport, anything that you're really trying to pursue some success and, and be good in, you know, it's a work, but it's constant because, you know, it's not like it's an overnight thing, you know. And that's what people think, that it's overnight. They, you success just... and they think, oh, you just popped up. They're not seeing the 10 years, you know, you put in, put in the game. Yes. No. Or they don't know the work that goes into it from those couple of seconds or minutes. Like they think it's just. You just, just fast. Yeah, like no, they no. think track is just running, just that's it. Like, no, it's your whole lifestyle. It's the it's everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you if you're a Olympic sports person, like that's your everything. Or whatever you do, it's your passion. That's it's not just like one little, oh, two hours a day. Like, no, because you're thinking about your US championships, or you're thinking about your next meet in the next couple of months. You think everything is planned out, everything has a schedule. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's just not that day to day it's always a plan like oh i can't do this today because next month i gotta do that and then this is championships and then i gotta go here people don't understand that you put in at least six to eight hours a day on your craft mm -hmm. they don't get it when you um and both of you both of your world champions you know just at the, at the highest levels um you know how was that transition you know leaving the college system and, and becoming a pro and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, doing things on your own and getting the contracts and all of that stuff. What was that transition like? Because, you know, I try to ask everyone that question just to get their perspective on it. I think in general, it's, it's pretty, it sounds like it's a tough thing, but I just want to hear from your perspectives. Uh-oh. Okay. They looked, at, uh, looked at each other uh, like, uh, um. They looked at each other like, oh. Um, for me, it was a big decision because um, you know, I was with Coach Fry for six years, and um, I went to college there. Uh, that's all I knew. And, you know, then I had my high school coach, uh, Raymond Spivey. Like, I got along with them well, and I was used to that, like, team type of thing. And um, this was the first time uh, I – well, I, I got my first uh, gold world championship medal in 2003 in Paris. And I, I'm, like, fresh out, of co um, fresh out of college. I was 21. And um, on the four by four. So after that, I was like, you know, I want to go back down to the sprint. So I had to make that decision. I want to run the one and the two. And um, I changed coaches and I was like, wherever I'm going to go, 
Remember I said I was like a C performer by myself. I was like, wherever I'm going to go, I don't know how it's going to be. I'm going to give 95 to 100% every day. Like, you know, and really, really focus. And you know what? It, it, it was very hard. But you know what? When I really put in the work, when I mentally, physically, um, I was very organized. Uh, I got my rest. Like things that I just, before I just kind of like ran. But this time I was like, you know what? I want to be a U.S. champion. I want to make the world team. And you know, I did it. I did it. And it was kind of like surreal. Like, wait, this is really happening. Like, you know, this is really happening. And it was, it was a different experience. It was kind of unbelievable a little bit from, not unbelievable, but like, I was really proud to see like, okay, once you really do, um, or for me, when I really set my mind to something, when I'm organized, when I'm getting my proper rest, when I'm yeah. eating pretty decent and my, my weight is good, I'm lifting and I'm sprinting as well. I became the U.S. champion in 100 meters. I PR'd the 200. I never really ran the four again. But I know, oh man, if I ran the four then, I know I would have ran 49. I just know it because it was crazy. But, um, and I and I just kept that going. And I've, I've had some gl- a lot of glitches. But, you know, I'll never forget that point in time, that transition. And I'll never that. forget the things that got me there. So... No, I love, I love that story because it just sounds like you made a decision. And I often talk to people about this, you know, when you, when you, if you want to accomplish something like that, be U.S. champion, you have to make a real decision and be honest about that decision. I'm going to be U.S. champ. And then every day, look at the decisions that you're making and see if they line up with that big decision. So the next day, are you doing all the things that it takes to achieve that goal that you declared the other day. You know, you want to be U.S. champ. So it sounds like you were like, hey, look, I'm putting 100% into this. This is what I'm going to do. My mm-hmm. diet, my sleep, I'm committing everything to this. And you were successful. You achieved your goal. And that's that's what it takes. It's real. And it was hard, I'm sure. It, it was hard. Um, but, you know, it was so rewarding because when you do things right, it's actually kind of easier. You know, like it sounds like... But like when you, when you do things right, and for me now, like sleep is hard. I know that sounds easy, but I'm like, it's hard for me to go to sleep. But um, I just had, I really had a strong intention on what I wanted to do. And then I was like, you know what? If I don't, if I don't make it, then it's, it, I called it my make it or break it year. Um, I said, if I don't make it or if I don't get another contract, because I just got released from my contract. And I'm like, man, I just want to world championship in the four by four. So it was kind of devastating. Like, man, it didn't renew my contract. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do things with good intention, be prepared, uh, get everything, all the check boxes. And if it doesn't work, then, hey, I can look back and say, look, I, I gave it an A effort. And that's all I had. And I can walk away like, okay. And it was my make it or break a year. And I, and I just, I just, I did it. And I was like, wow, this, this really happened. From not making money to now making money, like I'm, I'm overseas, I'm in the diamond leagues, the golden leagues, and I'm like top five in the world for a couple of years, number one in the world, number two in the world, and it was like that's a, a um an indicator of life, like what you put in is what you put out. And not all the time you're gonna win. I didn't win every race, but you know what? I know every time I lined up, that person next to me is was like, oh, dang, at least in the race, I gotta, I gotta go, yeah, yeah, and. You know, that's what I wanted to be a strong competitor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, no, nah, that's great. And how about you, Mickey? Well, for me, mine was different because I have my second foot surgery and um, I never come my senior year in college. I was battling injuries. I had two foot surgeries and one in 03 and one in 05. So I never really got to make that transition like I wanted to. So I had to. I was always getting uh, rehab and coming back. Mm-hmm. So, and when I saw my sister, I was like, oh, this is a new person now. Like she was really focused. And- oh wait, can I say something? Mm-hmm. That's what made me, like when Mickey got hurt, cause Mickey never really got hurt in college and she was just like, go, 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 go. So when she got hurt, I was like, man, she's really hurt. And like, I gotta step up now. I gotta have to really apply myself and that was my biggest motivation because that's what she always did. And I didn't really kind of care. Um, 
but when she got hurt i was like oh man she's she's out of here she's yeah. she's out like she i gotta carry her down the stairs and take her to rehab like that was kind of shocking too so i made that decision like you know what let me stop playing around and and a lot of things we were we were just learning so we didn't like our parents were in new jersey mm -hmm. and we didn't really have that support of, no I'm not saying for my parents but like most people have like their teens and stuff they did i don't feel like like i was doing a lot of stuff on my own mm -hmm. and so, like we weren't we never trained together ever. everyone always thinks that but we didn't mm -mm. so professionally of, yeah, yeah so that was to me one of the hardest things is just having the right people in your corner to show you what to do because mm -hmm. signing a contract is not hard I mean it's not easy going with the right team and the people is not easy and you really need that honestly to be a great athlete unless you can do it yourself but not too many people I mean you can but it's so much easier when you have the right team to make that transition mm -hmm. and especially when you're injured because a lot of times I was by myself I didn't I couldn't even make it to rehab half the time because it was far away so I mostly rehab myself i was like once a week rehab like mm -hmm. what is this gonna do do like and i was at practice so, yeah. curls i'm like no so i would just be home doing my own stuff and getting my foot together and that next year when i came back i came back in 06 and i got fourth at u.s championships and my june my uh the semifinals of u.s championships in 100 me and mary and jones were neck and neck and that was kind of cool to me like oh snap i'm right next to mary and jones but you know, yeah. I was cool, and that's when I got my um, my contract with Nike. Mm -hmm. But as far as like agents and groups, to me, that's been really hard to to manage. Like, you really mm -hmm. need a good agent, and you really need a good group, a good coach, a good coach, supportive coach. So yeah, someone who's gonna really like make sure you get it. Because if you if you if you have a coach that you're not getting along with. That's worse. I'd rather be alone by myself and train myself than ex wanting and expecting that attention and support you need from a coach. Cause that's a distraction when it should be something that's supposed to help you. So when you're like, dang, he ain't come to my, or they didn't come to my track meet or hello coach, yeah. are you there? Or am I your athlete? Yeah. That's the hard part. And that's part people don't realize. Like it, you need that. You need, you need teammates. You need, or you don't need, you just have to have people that, if there's one person you can be there that could be there for you, that's what you need when you're making a transition. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's the main thing. And so, that wasn't only a transition in your career, but that was throughout this conversation, you guys said that you guys were always together. You planned to go to college and this was the first time that you guys actually separated. So that was another transition because you were away from your sister for the first time. What was that like? Well, no, we, we lived together, but we didn't train together. Like mm -hmm. our coaches, nobody would train us together. Like really, is, we Weird. never train together, and when we do train together, it's different. Mm -hmm. Like with different coaches, like I don't, I don't get it. I don't really think twins are gonna do, but like, you're gonna take over the group. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't think you're like, too much how? I don't know. <laughs> we just never train together, but until now, and we're we're good. Like yeah. mm -hmm. when we didn't have no, we train together in later years in, in yeah. our careers, but through our whole twenties. Like I moved to LA in 2009 and she lived in North Carolina in Atlanta In Atlanta. So for six or seven years, we weren't around each other. And then mm -hmm. she moved out here in 2016. And ever since then we've been trained together, but mm -hmm. that was the first time ever, ever other than college. But even in college, she ran the four mm -hmm. and I ran the one and two. Yeah, and then sure. when I ran the four, she did, she was injured. And now we oh. both are winners. Yes. Yeah. You, you brought up an interesting point earlier, you know, when we're talking about transition to pro career, you were talking about just the contracts and how hard. I feel like for a lot of folks who want to transition into that, you know, pro track realm, that there isn't enough education on, on the whole process, getting an agent, negotiating a contract, you know, yeah. having someone to look at the contract and make sure that there are things in it that actually benefit you and protect you as an athlete, other than just exploiting you and your talent. And mm -hmm. it seems like there's a, a revolving, you know, this this revolving door system where it's just like, you know, they know that they're going to get some new fresh, some new seniors coming out of college every year. Some mm -hmm. Somebody who's running 9-9, nine, nine, somebody who's running 11 flat. Um, 
And so they don't have to take care of take care of you. That's that's how that's the sense that I get. And you know, I, I think it just needs to be needs to be better. Um, you guys, you know, you guys were in the system and experienced it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, is there? Do you feel like there's enough support um, for after? I mean, you guys are a world champion. You get to the highest level. I mean, people when they're kids dream about being world champions, and you guys became world champions. Is there enough support? Is there enough support from whether it's you know the system or you know the track and field as a whole? Is there you know for for people who have achieved something? To me, that's amazing. And especially being someone who ran track, you know the gold medal of the world championship. Listen, I was fast, and I'm racing people who are running by me. You know these are the top of the top, and that's where you guys, that's where you you ended up. You know gold medals. So you know. I just want to hear your thoughts on that, the support that you receive, you know, in general as You need support from, you say, coaches or like USA Track and Field, you're governing about like- I'm not trying to quote anyone, to quote anyone out specifically, but the system that we currently have, if world champions are finding issues, because, you know, I know how it is, you know, you run 11 flat this year, bam, you're good, you're on, you have your Nike contract, next year you pull your hamstring. Yeah. Right now. Oh, so I mean, it's 10-7. You have to run 10. It's crazy. It can sometimes. Like, I've been at a U.S. championship where everyone broke 11 seconds and some people didn't have contracts that year. Like, why? Or I, there's so it's many people that I know. Yeah. yeah. That, I, I do think we need support at track and field. Like, to me, I think they're still trying to figure out is track and field a professional sport? Like, yeah. why is that even a question or like yeah. yes a lot of people don't know that like you can really be it's a real sport and like yeah. no it's serious and like it's a living a lifestyle and that you know we we are here and mm -hmm. i think we're still every day trying to show that and we definitely need more support from sponsors from more visibility television more, more marketing you know like there's so many great athletes that people don't know about mm -hmm. and you know Maybe. so sometimes it's hard for me to say, oh yeah, be a track runner, you know, like, cause then sometimes it's like, is track, is it real? You know, like I think every track athlete should, or a certain amount of people, they should be okay to live and compete and be an athlete. Like, why do you have to be an Olympic gold medalist to pay your bills? Why? Why can't you be a, a athlete, a competitor, a great competitor in the field, just like other sports that get paid super millions of dollars why not saying you have to be a millionaire but why can't you be a competitor in your sport and and live you know like live well and be a, a professional athlete i don't think the majority of our sport is that you know i think if you make it to u.s championships if you're in that final you should you should be okay or you know if you top 15 something like why do you have to be the olympic gold medalist to 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 take care of yourself or to be well off you know you know i think everybody with track everybody's uh situation is different mm -hmm. so it's hard to generalize um it's hard to kind of generalize it because every athlete on that line has a totally different contract, contract. um some might have the same major, some might have the same coach, some might, when you say support. So it's kind of hard to generalize it all. Or um, I do think track and field needs a little more visibility because there was a time when you saw Maurice Green and John Drummond. Yeah, like the early 2000s and the 80s. The early 2000s like, and the 90s. Like, that yeah, was it. You saw it. And then it, it kind of, you know, dwindled down. I don't know why, but it did. Um, so... I just hope we can it can come back around like that where you know we we can see who's who and everybody is racing good and um performing well and you know it can come back back to that and hope hopefully it will I think it's kind of coming back around so yes I think Jack needs some more support or the athletes do. yes it's a yeah. lot of individualization with that too Okay. It's an individual sport to some aspect. And I agree with you guys. It's mm -hmm. definitely hard to get that visibility. I mm -hmm. mean, like you could be a track athlete, an Olympian, et cetera, but they'll ask if you're Usain Bolt because you say Usain Bolt. To be a Usain Bolt, that's like out of here. And mm -hmm. that's what they recognize. Not everyone is a Usain Bolt. There's so many others out there. So that visibility, I definitely um, agree with. 
for sure. Yes, and thank you for you saying both for bringing Seriously. track back like that, where there is a person you know you you can compare it to. So mm-hmm. they say, oh, do you know you saying? Like, yeah, know you saying. And there is somebody that they even know because for a minute there wasn't really even that for a second. Mm-hmm. So, it was it was high competition, but it took someone like you, Saint Bull, to bring thing, track back. So just yeah. imagine what we have to wait to get again, because that's a special being. Yes, and we I have to have that of, type of person to be noticed. And oh, I think yeah. that's that's not that's yeah, not the greatest thing right now. Flashiness. Or flashiness, yeah. You know, some swag. Yeah. We need more people to be on. We need more races on TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And more coverage. Even when, when you mentioned Maurice, you know, the fire hydrant thing with the spikes, mm-hmm. like some, add some swag, something that has people talking, you know, both get up there and say, I'm the best athlete in history, bask in my glory. You know, mm-hmm. you know, like some of that cockiness, some of that that energy to kind of bring people and be like, oh man, I want to watch. Because other than that, I guess, you know, other than fans who want to watch a four hurdle race, people aren't, mm-hmm. you know, they're not really talking track like that. I and think. we need more rivalries, I think. That helps too. Like I think this weekend coming up, um, oh, yeah. this weekend coming up on the American Track League, Track League is going to be a good meet. There's a lot of head to heads coming up this weekend, so that's going to be great. And special shout out to the American Track League and Paul Doyle because to actually have ESPN spots and then supporting uh, our different athletes as far as like Will Clay, he has his own. Um, Commercial, commercial. like that's a big wife. deal. Yeah. Well, Clay, Queen Harrison, Queen Clay, like to see you know people from our sport actually on ESPN with their commercial. We need stuff like that, and it was cool to watch the way they covered it. Mm-hmm. So more meets in the American Track League, more um, more coverage, more mm-hmm. stories, more rivalries, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You more cross marketing, allowing people to whatever creative outlet that you have i feel like track should be that platform to springboard it to see that a lot of people do that's the thing about being a track and field athlete like because we're entrepreneurs you know like if that's really who we are it's not like you you leave track and then you were left with all this money like hey i'm a multimillionaire like most people like i mean most athletes or whatever no you have to find a whole another way and a lot of people have found different outlets and platforms and different ways of branding themselves that mm-hmm. that makes them stand out so to me all track and field athletes are multi-talented and have to do a whole lot not just track and field mm-hmm. and what were you guys outlets what are you guys doing outside of track yes well i love to cook so i'm working on my own little show hold on hold on hold on don't because i want to comment on that point you just made before you go into this because i want to hear about this piece too you're, you're cooking yes but yes the point you just made about athletes having um just all these other things going on with them i agree with a million percent um mm-hmm. you know i hate that we you know we had a conversation the other day where you were mentioning how you know a lot of times people say things like oh you know track athletes well you're just track athletes so how do you know or do certain things you know track athletes yeah. like they're just downplayed for some reason all the time. And I'm like, (laughs) some of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life, the most brilliant, talented, you know, whether it's, you know, playing music or writing or just all the other things that they do outside of track, in addition to being championship caliber track and field athletes, just the talents that they have and the ability they have to hear anyone downplay someone like you're just a track athlete after I know how much time that you have to put in to get to a certain level in this sport. It's, 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 it's out to me is outrageous. It's outrageous. It is. And that's what we have to deal with daily on a business level on a day to day. Like, oh, you just, or I might, if I say, hey, I run track, and then I say something else, like, man, hold on, I didn't know you could do that. I thought you know how to run track. Like, I do run track, but there's a <laughs> lot of other things I can do. Or sometimes I might be in a business meeting and I'll, I'll um, come up with something and come up with a campaign. And like, we love the campaign. This was great. What'd you think about that? I never even heard of that. Like we pay all this money to these great advertisers and you came up with slogan like, yeah, but you're just a track athlete. I mean, how do you, I don't even understand how you know that. Like I am a track athlete, but you know, I do other things, but it goes like, I think it happens with a lot of people. Athletes. Yeah. yeah. And gen- that's the problem. Yeah. Because you get football, general. Basketball. Yeah. 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 Really? That's why. Football player. I'm like, Listen, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not Cornell. I mean, shut up and dribble with LeBron. Like, mm-hmm. you yeah, not crazy. Have any views or 
you're not smart, you're not this, and you know, that just kind of happens because your talent, your what you do, I mean, it's supposed to define you. It's supposed to define you. But and then it does, the, like, what's wrong with being no, no, no. I think people see what you do and they're like, I can't do that, but I'm smarter than them because I, you know, and you're like, well, not really though. <laughs> you just can't do yeah. that. Yeah. You, just, you know, like I said, I'm at Cornell, so I'm seeing, you know, I'm coaching track athletes who are engineers. And I'm like, so, and yes. I'm a women's team. I'm like, Goodness gracious, you know, you have Marshall Scholars, Rhodes Scholars, 4.0 GPA. So that to me is, I'm just like, people think that. They think that because you're a track athlete or an athlete in general that athlete, yes. yeah. shouldn't be multifaceted it's, to be able to- No, it can only be that. And then they know the window of being an athlete closes. Sure. So they say, oh, now what you gonna do? Or like, you're only an athlete, but it's like- Be good at something else. <laughs> be good at something else. A person who's yeah. driven to the point where they're getting a gold medal at the world championship can be driven to do something else. Exactly. Uh, that's, that's that's crazy. Okay, so what Ashley was asking you about cooking, because uh, you have a cooking channel, right? Well, it's a show. It's coming. Oh, it's works. show. It's right. in the works. Mm -hmm. In the it's works. Coming up soon. Yes. Okay. It's good. Okay, it's I want to hear about it. So I've always, not always, but mm -hmm. I started cooking actually my senior year in college because well, my grandmother could always cook really well. My mom, a lot of people come from a lot of great cooks, my dad, mm -hmm. but I was like, I don't really cook. Like, how do they make it taste so good? So that's when I was like, you know what? When I got my own apartment, I, I, I got it. I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna start cooking. And that's when I started. And then my boyfriend at the time, I will never forget this. I was making some food, some meal, some dinner. I was like, oh, okay, you want something? He was like, no, nah, I'm going to McDonald's. Like, <gasps> whoa, McDonald's though? He said he, <laughs> McDonald's. Oh, Out of okay. everywhere else, he chose McDonald's over your home cooking. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Then he comes back, whatever, and then I'm eating the food like, this is good. He's like, then I, he just, he's like, let me try it. He's like, man, this is really good. I know it's good. You trying to play my, my food? Why would you not eat it? All right, cool. So from that point on, I'm getting all the recipes and getting all this stuff, and I started cooking from there. And then when I got to North Carolina, I had a hyperthyroidism, mm -hmm. and I was like, I didn't know what that was, whatever, but I just remember myself feeling a certain way. And I'm like, something's not right. And you're like, oh, you have hyperthyroidism. I'm like, okay. Then they said I had to eat a certain way. And I did. And from that point on is when I was like, I love cooking. I love cooking healthy food. Mm -hmm. And it that part changed my life. So I always love cooking healthy, good food. Because a lot of people are like, Nick, you always eating this and that. They'd be like, but it's good though. I'm like, <laughs> yes. Like you don't have to eat junk food to eat good food you have to work on that oh man see me and lisa together like please stop buying this bread these all right snacks. all right because i'm gonna eat right. them so that's what it <laughs> i like to eat i love to eat i'm a foodie so when i have food around me i eat it but in my house i don't really buy a lot of junk food because i'm gonna eat it then me and lisa live together again then I, i'm like lisa what are these cakes and these cookies I, are here I, for all right all right i'm working on it guys what is that? <laughs> so now fast forward I started um, 2014, I started using the hashtag Nick made it. Okay. And I would always hashtag my food and they're like, Nick, oh, my, my home girl one time, she would never eat my food. I'm like, you want some food? And you know, she's like, no, I don't like, what you, how do you know how to cook? I didn't, I would cook all the time. She was like, no, nah, I don't want that. Like, it's good. Mm, you were, you're, you, how do you know how to cook? You don't know how to cook. Like, okay. She finally ate the salmon and my salad from a homemade salad dressing. She was like, Mickey, you missed your calling. I said, no, you, <laughs> you missed your calling. Heart. She was like, this is good, this salad dressing. I said, I know it's good. She was like, she was saying something else, but like, she was like, it's good. I'm like, I know. I've been telling you that for at least a year. She was like, but I'm like, no, you just didn't want to believe that I can cook because you're projecting because you can't cook. <laughs> now, now look. And so I've been, um, she ate the food and she was like, this is amazing. So now um, I've got um, a company hit me up, said they wanted me to start my own show. Uh-oh. I have creative control, and it's coming out soon. And I'm going to be the sous chef. Yes, and she's going to be my helper, the prepper, you know? Lisa, you cook too? I cook. I don't know. Uh, you sure? I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the prepper. Like, I'm the prepper. <laughs> set everything up. So we cook meat. Are you going to wash the chicken? I see. I don't really. So y'all gotta get some good recipes. But you're the sous chef, so 
Y'all got to get some good recipes. I'm from the Caribbean. Oh, we're from the Caribbean. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, sh- I want some know. oxtail. Do you put, okay, so what's the um Coca-Cola chicken or Coca-Cola or Pepsi chicken? Ashley probably knows too. Then. I don't know. I don't know. No. I don't Pepsi know what Pepsi chicken, chicken no. is. I've heard that sounds Pepsi American chicken. to me. Stew chicken? Pepsi? Oh, brown stew, stew chicken. chicken? Brown stew chicken? Yeah. You oh, put Pepsi okay. in it? Pepsi? You call that Pepsi? Like the soda, like yeah. oh, wow! I think that's nah, like man. only Y'all you. Tripping. That was only you. Nah, yeah, we're not putting Pepsi in. I can't, I can't, I can't. Island, 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 island people that one. who are listening, please disregard that. Uh, I got it from an island person. She's she not, not saying get that from an island person. I don't know what chicken. island that person is from. I cannot from co-sign that. I'm not part of that. From where? From Jamaica, Kenya Sinclair. Kenya. Nah, man, you don't have the Jamaican oh, up on my YouTube. Oh, Kenya, we were in. Australia and you just together. called out Kenya Sinclair because she's going to be <laughs> denounced from Jamaica. Man, I don't know who puts Pepsi in stew chicken. I never heard Sorry. of that. It was the best stew chicken ever. That's all I want to call her know. now. Like, we were in Australia. She's going to watch this video and hopefully comment. And- yeah, she'll be like, it was good. Okay. Comment. I want to taste this Pepsi chicken if it's good. And this was one of the things. We are in Australia doing the best meats ever. We were over there for like two and a half weeks. This is one thing about track and field. People it is. It is. People don't know where you are. They like, oh, you ain't no. I've been to four. I've been to ten countries already. Like in the past two months, actually, yeah. they think you're not doing nothing and not racing. Like, no, I don't. <laughs> you just didn't see me. Yeah, you know, I've been getting it in. So yep. we we're in Australia. We had the Sly Condo at the Medina Hotel, right next to the Olympic Stadium, where Rihanna was performing that weekend. And I, I wish I was there. It was the best trip of my, one of the best trips of my life. Mm. We had the <laughs> me, Justin Gaiman, Monica Carlos, and Keenan Sinclair. And me, Monica, and Kenya were roommates. And Justin, I think, had his own situations on his other floor. But it was amazing. So Kenya's, we had our own, we went, we had, it was the, the best. So Kenya was cooking some chicken, stewed chicken. And she had, I think it was Pepsi. She was putting Coke in it or like soda. And it was nice. good. Yeah. Wait till Kenya watched this. And then we're going to have to have a whole another run it back and be like, look, this is what the Pepsi or ch- Coke chicken is. Yeah, I I'm need to hear it from her mouth first before I leave it. I'm from it. St. Croix. <laughs> don't let people back home, please don't associate me with this recipe. Please don't fry me. No, <laughs> no she said Jamaica, so I think we okay. I know. That's just, just for having Jamaican someone stuff. on the show, on this podcast, saying something about Pepsi and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I, okay, I'm going to run this back. That'll be your recipe um, on the show. Yeah, on the Mick made it. Okay. Now I want to see this it, This is though. the one clip that we need that says that has anyone else use yes. Pepsi in stew chicken. And if Comment the poll says please. no. Pepsi or Coke in the stew Pepsi chicken. or Coke and chicken. If anyone puts their Pepsi or Coke and chicken, please comment stew and chicken. let us know how it is. It was um, amazing. I, I, yeah. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yes. So Lisa, now it's one of my transitions. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was ahead. reading that um, you started your own jewelry line. <laughs> yes, I have a jewelry line called the Honey Collection. Your bracelets, the Honey Bee Collection, was actually one of the first healing bracelets that I had because I was in it and I was around real time. And huh? I saw you been post. You were posted on Tiffany Tiffany Williams, a hurdler. Yes. Yeah. She posted your thing, uh-huh. and then I bought one of your um, bracelets. Oh my Yours god! This is one of the first ones I had. I now have these. This is like from Inspire. But oh man, that's definitely so go and look into that in some more because I that's do the ivory healing stone. properties and everything. Pardon me? I got to send you another one. I yeah. got you. I'm going to send you another one. Thank you for you your and support. Adrian. You and Adrian. You guys will get you. a honey collection green. bracelet. Oh, awesome. That sounds yeah. good. They need oh, yeah. an updated one. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to send you a new one. Uh, I actually started 10 years ago. Um, wow. I was living in Atlanta and um, I wanted to, I was um, doing a lot of research on healing stones because actually I got into a car accident. This was kind oh. of a little detour in my career. Mm-hmm. and um I was actually leaving a track meet and um I was in Canada and um I went you know how they had like those healing stores and stuff mm-hmm. like with all like the books and the stones and all that and uh this lady at the store and um she gave me a carnelian stone for whatever reason I don't know like that was the aura I had um when I came in and I'll just never forget I'll just never forget it and, and I started like like researching stones and their healing properties. Mm -hmm. So um, I started at the time, I made a bracelet for my boyfriend at the time. And then I just started wearing stones myself and I just had them on my wrist. So everywhere I went out, um, you know, 
people were like, where'd you get your braces from? Yeah, yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh, I made them. They were like, well, can I, can I buy them off your arm? And that's how it started. It started like that. And then I was just like selling and making bracelets from back then. And I, I still do it. Um, my jewelry line on Instagram is Honey Collection Jewelry. Everything I make and um, each stone has their own healing property, uh, power, strength, mm -hmm. all different type of things, depending on the stone. And it, it's still going pretty good. I didn't think it would go as far as it did, but it, it's it's still going it's still going well. That's pretty cool. No, And also on the cooking show, I'm going to be, I make juices as well. Okay. Ooh, I, love juices. Juices. I love the juices. I love. I'll be having my juice recipes on there. I have three good ones. I'm not going to say them yet. So um, you guys have to tune in. What three good names? What do you mean? Three good names on the juices. I mean, three good juices. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna say so this is the banter that we can expect to see on your cooking show. Yes. Yes. It's gonna be good and actual cooking too, which would be great. Actual cooking, actual a little bit of cooking, cooking, banter, you know. Yeah, yeah. Music. music. We're gonna have a music. R and B. Oh, that's gonna be a party. Candy kids. Oh, yeah. You already know. That sounds, that sounds, that sounds right. Please yeah. just leave the stew chicken with Pepsi out. Yeah. Just FYI. I'm gonna put that in there so just so you can know that. Matter of fact, we gotta bring Ashley and Adrian on the show so they can taste it. That's I'm down. We're having I'm guests. a foodie too. I like food. I gotta bring Keenan to show you out. the situation. I'm, I gotta I'm all about it. it. I'm all about it. <laughs> So you two are always active, always busy, you know, considered uh, sport ambassadors. I know you mm -hmm. guys have been on different magazines and Sports Illustrated and all kind of fun stuff. Um, yeah. So what is it, you know, I know you're doing your, you have the cooking um, channel that you're starting. And I know that you're dealing with, um, and I know Lisa, you have your jewelry company. Are, are there any things within track that you guys are still working with, working oh, on yeah. any projects or anything? That you can tell well, us. we're both coaches. Well, we coach, so Perfect. we have a lot of clients, we got a lot of youth kids that we work with. So, we're all about being fast and fearless, you know. Mm -hmm. And we have motivate, um, fearless minds is our motivational speaking company that I started in 2015, and we've been oh, to over cool. 200 schools. and That's what we've been doing via Zoom. And when we used to be outside, we used to be in public and go tear all the schools up. Mm -hmm. But I know, know. y'all always active. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, we just keep moving and having different platforms and things that we can do. So Fearless Minds is one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we're always uh, connected to track and field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I coach at um, different uh, junior, I coach at PCC College and um, pa Pasadena City College mm -hmm. and Calabasas High School. We work with a, diff a lot of different high schools around here and individuals, yeah. kids. So we're always looking to see the next who's fastest or, you know, just in all sports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just tr trying to keep people healthy and active. That's yes. one thing we do. We, we do a lot of workout classes, mm -hmm. um, fitness, hit workouts. Yeah. So we do it all. No, that's pretty cool. I know, you know, I was talking to uh, Michael Cherry recently and he was talking about how, you know, he looked up, he saw LaShawn in, the, in his local area and he looked mm -hmm. up to LaShawn and that's kind of what got him running track and then track got mm -hmm. him to college and, and, you know, now he's competing against LaShawn. And yeah. so, you know, how, how active, you know, both of you, your stories, you know, coming up, you know, from Montclair and then the whole South Carolina, you know, triumph and then going from there, becoming world champions. You know, you guys have been involved with the sport for a long time and have a lot of history and, you know, have been in millions of articles and are well known. And I know that there's a lot of, you know, little girls out there who who see you and like oh I want to be like you know make it I want to be like Lisa and you know I want to be an Olympian and you know mm -hmm. it's it's easy to kind of forget that impact because maybe you don't see it directly but there are people who are looking at your stories and who are being motivated and who are you know going to be able to go to college or you know whatever oh, no. based off of you know track or whatever they pursue and, and a lot of that motivation is coming from what they see from you too so you know if no one's told you you know, keep doing what you're doing. Folks are definitely, you. you know, watching. And, you Thanks. know, you two are two of the most um, influential, two of the most, you know, two of the best track athletes, the most amazing track athletes that I've, you know, I've ever met. And I'm happy to, to know you two. Um, you know, it's, it's just, and so hopefully I can get you guys back on here and we could talk some more. Um, of course. Thank you, up, Adrian. Thank you, Ashley. This has been great. Thank yeah, you guys yeah. for being my first guest. Yeah, you are amazing. Yeah. Yes, Ash. I know. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, this is great. It's a great chat.
See, it's not too bad. It's not all stuff. No, this, this was good. I was about to say it's over. I thought we had more questions. Asked. I mean, no, you can, yeah, no, we can, you know, it's it's not, I'm not putting a hard stop on it. I gave you an opportunity to dip out if you needed to. But no, this there's always more that we can chat about because you know, how often am I gonna get the barber twins up here? You can always call us up and we can yeah because we're already coming back from round two when don't I, listen oh you, we got to get the chicken and then we're gonna see so we got to call, them, back from call round them up I might yeah have we have to do the poll to see if this chicken and pepsi is a thing that's Let not say, and then i don't know the show I, don't, I don't know so <laughs> i'm just saying me. here's my thing if if y'all gonna have black people watching this show be careful man because you know it sounds crazy. Are highly you, critical. I don't know. I saw her food. pouring Coke. I think it was Coke. I don't know. I, or was it, Pe- it was Pepsi or Coke. And I'm like, where's that going? And she was like, I like how Lisa ahead. just backed away from the, <laughs> yeah, she, the conversation. She was just like, I don't know. I wasn't there. We'll see. All right. I don't, I've never seen it. I trust your said it was a Jamaican. But I don't friend. know about that. I so feel like all my chicken friends, y'all gotta come back and say, like, duh, we know what soda chicken is. I know, and I'm gonna feel bad. They're gonna fry me. <laughs> but that's okay. I'd rather be on the side of not knowing about any Pepsi and chicken than, than on that side. So let but me you- tell y'all too. If I'm the sous chef and I prepare, I'm not pouring in the soda. I'm pouring the <laughs> You should not take responsibility for anything that's, that's produced. I take accountability for everything and responsibility for my Coke chicken. Okay, my Coke Okay. Pepsi. Don't hurt right. nobody, please. Okay. And no. that's why. When I say, like, we, I think I'm the oldest person on the track and field, oldest friend in the world right now. Okay. So I would never think right now, or if you asked me when I made the Olympic team 20 years ago, that I would be running what? 20 years later. Like, I wouldn't think that. I don't feel it. You know, a lot of times we put limits on ourselves and that we can't do certain things once we reach a certain age or do certain things. But mm-hmm. I just kind of tell people that anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel better than I've ever felt, you know, so I would never think that I would be running this long ever. You'd ask me at 19, 20, like you're going to be doing 20 years later, not Not this, this. but honestly, it's a blessing to say that I still run track and that I'm competing against the top or the best Mm -hmm. of that. I made my 20, 19, 20, whatever U.S. championship. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I just want to tell people to keep going and be fearless and just, you know, Every win comes with a loss, and every loss comes with a win. And so, okay, I like that. Yeah. No. No. So keep going with we that. You know, that's why I keep my mind positive. And you know, I, I work on my mind just as much as my body. So that's mm-hmm. what I'm going to tell all the young and older people. You know, everyone caters to like, oh, the youth, the youth, that's cool. But you know, there's people that are our age or whatever, or younger, or whatever. Like, we still have a lot more life to live, and you know, just keep living it to the fullest. Yes. Hey, look, there's people who are aiming for their very own championship, their very own, you know, in a sense, their Olympic team, you know, it doesn't matter. Yes. They, they're, they're somewhere and they're aiming for something else and they don't know how to go about it. And when they do start and it gets hard, they don't know that that hard part is normal. It's, yes. it's going to be hard, guaranteed. And you actually have to just endure through that to get where you want to get. And I think that's the part that I like bringing, you know, all you superstars on to keep saying that, like, yo, this was hard. Mm-hmm. If enough of you keep coming on, like, this was hard, this was hard, then I think everybody yeah. would be like, you know what? Life is hard. And if you want to accomplish anything, you're going to have to deal with some hard stuff. So let's get it. Yes. You know? Yes. So nah, that's, that's pretty cool. And one cool thing about track that you did mention, because we don't want to, you know, track may not be the money sport, but you get to travel. I mean, I've been to 40 countries and I've, you know, I've been breaking in any, won any medals except a, a right. the medal. I want to Kariff the medal, Kariff the bronze. And Bolt was in the race. So, I, was, okay. I, I, yeah. I, 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 they didn't have three passports and been around the world like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a lot of people can say that yeah. at all. And honestly, I think I've been blessed to say that I have had a contract and that I have made money yeah. in track. Because they always say, oh, you know what? But then no, that's why a lot of people still run and stay running because you, you can make, make money. You do make a good living. Yeah. You can. You yeah. can. Yeah. You and then what's the answer. other option? You can go to corporate America and probably make almost the same thing, about 40K a year, and sit behind a desk. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather do that and travel the world? Yeah, Work or you can make three, it a lot. You can make 500,000 in a year. I know, yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. So, that like, it ain't just 40K this, either. This, this, mm-hmm. Disclaimer, this is for the really good folks. And yeah. it's, 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 it's possible. We've it's, experienced both. Some people, I don't, some people have never had a, a big, a shoe deal, like a Nike deal or Adidas deal like that. So, and then and some we, people have 
never had less than six figure deal. Yeah. So, some people turn down, like, I'm not taking no 200 grand. Like, what? what? <laughs> like, people turn down that. Yeah. I know at least 10 people I know they were like, I ain't, I ain't signing no deal for the low six figures. This what? is this is a track person shut yeah. it down. Like, so that's why I said each is different. Each person is different. You can't yeah. really generalize it. But as someone who I think doesn't have a contract, but like, wait, they make how much? Or some people that you think make all this money, and like they only make that much. It just depends. Yeah, Seek it varies. Legal advice. So pretty much, you need someone to help negotiate on your behalf when you're getting into the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. it always is that, but. Yeah. It can it can be negotiated. Just know that that it is a, it is a possibility that you can make money do well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now that's pretty cool. All right. Well, look. I'm glad you guys joined us. That thank you guys so much for having us. This was great. Yes. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming on. Talk. Thank you for sharing don't all your talk. insight. So people gonna still thank think it's the Gamecock bot. <laughs> podcast if i keep bringing gamecocks on i'm like you oh, have bringing on a lot of gamecocks really good we're just gonna let it slide because we have so many great gamecocks you have to mm-hmm. that's, that's what, what i mean i mean it's not like it's favoritism it's I mean, like no you really like, like, have we're that deep that we're that just, deep you just and that's to, why you gotta you know, just get all the game like a whole class of world champions like come on yeah at least men and women yeah so it's justified so we will let him slide i know y'all i mean you know you were illinois right I'm an Illinois Illini, Big yeah, Ten. You know, y'all were okay. good. Mm-hmm. Y'all were <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did what I had to do. So yeah. you, I'll be playing. I like Illinois. No, no, you're not playing. That's an SEC. That's yeah, how no, that's an SEC act. thing. But I mean, yeah, I was yeah. a lot of uh, all American with a lot of the SECs were just on a relay. So I'm not even gonna lie. I'm just gonna say yeah. I did my thing. That's but all you can do. You can show up at meets like, what teams are those? <laughs> It's okay. You ready when the final showed up. You saw the eye. Yes, that's all. <laughs> What's that? I said when the finals. You know the last um day of end season is broadcast. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, you saw the eye. Oh, yeah, on that yeah, day, no, so we didn't have to you. worry about when we were coming in. No, I'm not talking about that you. day. Yeah. You saw the eye. Right. Uh, uh, Illinois okay. people, please don't chew me out either. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. I'm just playing with y'all. SEC do go hard, but you know I'm you in the Ivy now, so represent. It's all good. I can hold. I can hold it down for the ten. True, <laughs> true. That's all that matters. So. All right, all right, cool. Let me know when that cooking channel gets up, because I want to see what, what concoctions you guys put together. New content. Thank, coming thank out you for doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm excited to taste thing. this. I don't know if I'm excited to taste this sort of chicken, but I'm no. looking forward to seeing what it come out with. I'm gonna support <laughs> though. I just said no. Sure. <laughs> All right, we'll see how this goes. All right, guys. ladies, appreciate it. Thank you Thank so you. much. Y'all have a good one. Be safe. You too. All right, have a good night. Bye. Bye.